Hello, everyone. It is our second practice class. I'm your teacher, Kofifi. Today, we will practice mirrors of a central tendency and the dispersion and the normal distribution. Same as last time, firstly, we will review the theoretical knowledge. Firstly, the mirrors of a central tendency. Is there are four mirrors of a central tendency, including the arithmetic mean, the median, the geometric mean, and the mode. Different mirrors have different application conditions. The first one, arithmetic mean. Arithmetic mean is used to describe the central tendency of a symmetrical distrib distribution data, especially the normal distribution. The arithmetic mean is the sum of all the observations divided by the total number of observations. It is very easy. You just need to sum all the values in your uh, sample and then divide by the sample size for the sample's uh, arithmetic mean, denoted by x bar. But if you want to calculate the population arithmetic mean, now you need to uh, sum all the values in your population and then divide by the total number of observations, denoted by mu. Those are the uh, arithmetic mean, the preferred measure of central tendency for the symmetrical distribution. It's partially the normal distribution, the arithmetic mean. The second measure of our central tendency is the median. It is the middle value of a data set. Before we get the median, we must to order the data set by descending or ascending, both OK. Then we find out which one is the middle one. Treat the middle one as the median of your data set. Now, if the number of uh, values, the number of observations is old, there is a unique value located at the middle. We treat this unique middle value as the median directly. Now, the median is the number of values n plus 1, and then divided by 2, the largest value in the data set. Because this value was the uh, middle value in your data set. So we treat this middle value as the median. But if the number of values in your data set is uneven, there is no unique value located at the middle with one half below it and one half above it. Now we need to treat the average of the two middle values as the median. So now the median is the average of the number of value divided by two the largest value and the number of value divided by two plus and then plus one the largest value. We need to calculate the average of those two middle value and treat the average of those two middle value as the median. And besides the median is the preferred measure of central tendency for skewed distribution. The third measure of central tendency is the geometric mean. The geometric mean is the nth root of the product of values. The geometric mean is suitable to the data distributed in logarithm symmetrical distribution, especially the logarithm normal distribution. What is the logarithm symmetrical distribution? Now, if the original values is a scaled distribution, it's not the symmetrical distribution. 
but after we transform the values to log the logarithmic scale, now it become uh, it becomes symmetrical distribution. Such a distribution we call it as the logarithm symmetrical distribution. Now the stereometric mean is the preferred measure of central tendency for logarithm symmetrical distribution. Besides, since the logarithm logarithmic scale of original value is a symmetrical distribution, now we can calculate the arithmetic mean of a logarithm. Logarithm. And then we take the anti-logarithm of the mean logarithm. Lastly, we can also get the value of arithmetic mean. So there's three steps. Firstly, we need to transform all the original value to the logarithmic scale. The second step, we need to calculate the arithmetic mean of the logarithmic scale. And then, anti-logarithm, the arithmetic mean. Now, it is the geometric mean. It is also the geometric mean. The geometric mean is the preferred measure of central tendency for logarithm symmetrical distribution. Two methods can be used to calculate the arithmetic mean. The last measure of central tendency is the mode. It is the most frequently occurring value among all, all the observations in a, day, in, in a sample. It is very easy. You just need to uh, find out the most frequently occurring value and treat that most frequently occurring value as the mode. Those are the four measures of central tendency. The arithmetic mean is the preferred measure of central tendency for symmetrical distribution. The median is the preferred measure uh, of central tendency for skewed distribution. The geometric mean is the preferred measure of central tendency for logarithm symmetrical distribution. Um, and lastly, the, finally, the mode can be used for all type of data. Those are the measures of a central tendency. Now, next is the measures of a disproportion. There are several different measures of this portion can be used to describe the variability of a data set, including the range, the interquartile range, the variance, the standard deviation, and the coefficient of a variation. The range is um, the simplest measure of uh, this portion. It is the difference between the largest uh, and the smallest uh, observations in a sample. We just need to subtract the smallest value from the largest value of a data set. The larger value of the range indicates the greater variability of a data. The second, the second measure of dispersion is the interquartile range. The interquartile range is the difference between the um, 50, uh, 75th percentile and the 25th percentile. We need to subtract the 25th percentile from the uh, 75th percentile uh, to get the interquartile range. So if we want to determine the interquartile range, we uh, if must to determine the value of 25th percentile and 75th percentile. But how to determine a percentile? Before we calculate the value of a percentile, firstly, we should uh, to know the expression n multiply x and then divide by 100 is an integer or not. Now, n is the sample size, the, way, the number of values in the sample. x is the percentile that we want to calculate. 
Firstly, we need to calculate the value of the pressure n multiply x and then divide by 100. We need to know this the value of this pressure is an integer or not an integer. If m multiply x divided by and then divided by 100 is not an integer. Now, you need to think out the largest integer smaller than the value of this expression, denoted by a k. Now, k plus 1's largest value in the data set was the percentile that we want to calculate. But if the value of uh, the pressure n multiply x and then divide by 100 is an integer, if it, the value of this pressure is an integer, now the average of this integer's largest value in the data set, and this integer plus one's largest value in the data set is the exact value of the uh, percentile that we want to determine. So, according to the value of the pressure, n multiply x and then divide by 100 is an integer or not an integer, the method, the method that we calculate the value of the percentile is different. According to uh, um, uh, such a method, now we need to calculate the value of 25th percentile and 75th percentile. After we get the value of 25th percentile and 75th percentile, subtract the 25th percentile from the, uh, from the 75th percentile is the interquartile range. The interquartile range is the preferred measure of dispersion for skewed distribution. It is the second measure of dispersion interquartile range, the preferred measure of dispersion for skewed distribution. But for symmetrical distribution, we prefer the variance and the standard deviation to describe the dispersion of data. The population variance is denoted by sigma square, while the population standard deviation is denoted by sigma. The sample variance is denoted by s square, with the sample um, standard deviation denoted by s. If we want to calculate the value of variance and the standard deviation, for study, we need to calculate the arithmetic mean of the data set and then get the deviation of the mean, deviation from the mean for each value in your data set. In the second step, we square the deviation from the mean for each value. Then we sum all the squared deviation from the mean. Then and then get the average, the squared deviation from the mean. Now the average squared deviation from the mean is the variance. It is the variance. But the unit of variance is uh, different from the original data. Now we take the positive square root of the variance to get the standard deviation. Now the standard deviation is the preferred measure of distribution for symmetrical distribution, especially the normal distribution. The last measure of distribution is the coefficient of variation. It was used to compare the variability of data sets measured in different uh, units or with different or with wide different means. The coefficient of variation 
as the coefficient of variation is defined as the percentage of the standard deviation to the mean denoted by CV. It is a measurement of relative variability related the standard deviation of a data set to its mean. The greater size of the coefficient of variation, the greater variability in the data. It was used to compare the variability of data sets measured in different units or with widely different measures. Now, those are the uh, those are the measures of distribution. Different measures have different application conditions. For scaled distribution, we prefer the interquartile range to describe the variability of data. But for the symmetrical distribution, we prefer the standard deviation. Especially, we prefer the standard deviation. And we must use the coefficient of variation to compare the variability of a data measured in different units or with what different means. Those are the measures of dispersion. The last topic of today is the normal distribution. We know the normal curve is transformed from histogram. We know that the vertical axis of a histogram is relative frequency density. The area of each rectangle is the relative frequency of each interval. Of each interval. The sum area of all rectangles is the total. Uh, it is the total of a relative frequency of all intervals is one. Now suppose that we collect more data from more individuals. Now the number of values fell in each interval will be increased, and now we re uh, re uh, reduced the width of each interval. Now the width of each rectangle will be get narrower in our histogram. Now, if we collect more data and reduce the width of each interval and repeat this process indefinitely, now the width of each rectangle will be getting narrower and narrower. When A2 reach a certain level, each rectangle will become a black line. Now, we connect the top of those rectangles, now we will get a small curve. This small curve is called the normal distribution curve in mathematical. Highest in the middle, two sides is lower and zero, uh, lower, bilateral symmetry. The normal distribution is symmetrical, it is symmetric about mu. The slope of the curve is different, there is a change in direction of a curvature at two places called the points of inflection. Located at the uh, other side of a mu plus sigma and mu uh, minus sigma respectively. Any normal distribution is uniquely defined by mu and the sigma square, with the mu is the mean of a distribution, and the sigma square is the variance of the distribution. The mean, mu, determines the location of the normal distribution curve. So it is called as the location parameter. And the variance, sigma square, it minds the shape of the normal distribution curve. So it is called as the shape parameter. Now, if, if the mean increases or decreases, the normal distribution curve will move to the left or the right along the horizontal axis. The mean increases move to the left. Uh, the mean increase move to the right, and the mean decrease move to the left. Now, sigma is the shape. 
is the shape parameter. Sigma is also is the measure of a dispersion for normal distribution. If sigma is get smaller, now the variability of data is smaller. The data will be more concentrated. The value that fell into the center interval will be more, and the values fell into the two tails will be less. Now. The shape of the normal curve will be get higher and thinner, but if sigma is get larger, if sigma increases, the variability of the data is get larger. The data will be more scattered. Now the value that fell into the center interval will be less. And the values fell into the two tails will be more. So now the shape of the normal curve will be get shorter and fatter. So if the standard deviation sigma decreases, the normal distribution curve will be get higher and thinner. If the standard deviation sigma in increases, the normal distribution curve will get shorter and fatter. It is the shape parameter sigma. Besides, the total area and the normal curve is one. No matter what the value of mean and the standard deviation are, the area and the normal curve have a common ruler. That is, nine sixty eight point two seven percent of area and the normal curve is within one standard deviation of the mean. Ninety percent of area and the normal curve is within one point six four standard deviation of the mean. Ninety five ninety five percent of area and the normal curve is within one point nine six standard deviation of the mean. Ninety nine percent of area and the normal curve is within two point five eight standard deviation of the mean. Since a normal distribution have an infinite number of possible values for its mean and standard deviation, it is possible to tabulate the area associated with each and every normal curve. Instead, only the standard normal distribution curve is tabulated. The standard normal distribution. It's a special normal distribution with the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. So if we want to determine probabilities, probabilities involving a normal distribution, the following procedure can be used. Firstly, we need to standardize any value of variable to uh, this score. This score follows the standard normal distribution. Now, how to standardize any value of variable to this score? Using we need to use the given value of variable, subtract the mean of this variable mu, and then divide by the standard deviation of this variable sigma. It is this score. A given value of a variable, any given value of a variable, can be used this formula to get the this score. Now the this score follows the standard normal distribution. Secondly, we get the probability by looking up the this score in the appendix Z table. Now the value displayed in the appendix table is the probability of the value is less than the uh, calculated z score. It is the left cumulative area of this z score. So if we want to get the probability of the value 
smaller than a value, a given value. It is a left community area. Now you just need to consult the uh, appendix table to get the left area of the z score. But if we want to get the probability of the variable is larger than the uh, uh, larger than the calculated z score, now you need to subtract the uh, table value from one because the total area and the normal curve is one. After we get the left area, now subtract the left area from one is the right area. Additionally, if we want to get the probability of the variable is between two value, between two the middle area over two value. Now you need to subtract the two uh, tail area from one to get the middle area. To subtract the left area over one value and uh, um, the right area of is that value to get the middle area of those two values. It is the, uh, the middle area of uh, two value. Those are the theoretical knowledge of today. According to the theoretical knowledge that we have learned, now you need to complete four exercises. The first one, you need to um, calculate several 30 takes using above 27 values, including the arithmetic mean the median, the interquartile range, the 68 percentile, the variance, the standard deviation, and the coefficient of variation. The second exercise, you need to calculate the geometric mean of above t values. Now you need to transform the original value to logarithmic scale and calculate the arithmetic mean of the logarithmic scale and then and then anti-logarithmic of the arithmetic mean to get the geometric mean. Now the third exercise you need to um, compare. You need to compare the variability between height and wage. For this exercise, you need to calculate the coefficient of variation for height and weight respectively and then compare the variability between height and weight according to the value of a coefficient of variation. The last one is the application of a normal distribution to get the left area, the right area and the middle area of the, and the normal distribution. Now, you need to complete those four exercises independently and then upload your answer in your class. Okay, come on, I'll run. Bye.